الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم Welcome to our weekly program Tafsir Thursday Inshallah today we are going to continue Surah Al-Qalam We're going to do verses 10 to 33 these verses are divided into two parts. The first part is about Walid ibn Mughira. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the, the defects about him. And the second part is about a story of Bani Israel that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave as an example to the Kuffar Quraysh. So the first verses, let's start off with the recitation of the first seven verses that we're going to do today. وَلَا تُطِعَ كُلَّ Hammazim <laughs> So, these verses are for Walid ibn Mughira. We had a small discussion about him in the previous class. Walid ibn Mughira was a leader of one of the clans of Quraysh. His clan was in charge for the warfare related matters. Uh, he was a powerful man, he had a lot of money. Even his children were powerful. In the Arab uh, society, having power and fame is one thing, but even if your children become powerful and uh, they have money and uh, wealth and fame and power, that's another status for you. So, uh, Walid ibn Mughriya was one of the persons, one of the five who used to mock Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who used to do a lot of blasphemy and uh, one day he was cursing Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave a response 10 defects of Walid ibn Mughira uh, As a response to what he has done for Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam So starting off with the translation وَلَا تُطِعْ كُلَّ حَلَّا فِي مَّهِينَ Nor listen, ever listen to any excessive oath maker uh, Over here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, Talking to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the previous verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying that O Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam These people call you majnoon and they call you different names Don't listen to them and uh, don't become lenient on them They want you to become uh, come towards their religion, worship their God So that they would worship your God Don't become lenient on them And don't ever listen to anyone that makes an uh, excessive oath maker Halaf uh, Someone that uh, swears a lot Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that don't listen to anyone that swears so much and he is a maheen. He is someone that lies a lot. So the person lies so much that when he wants people to believe him, he swears. Um, so this is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has disliked. And this is something that you know, we should stay away from. Even in our society, there's people that uh, they swear way too much this is something that we should avoid ourselves from and uh, the next is hamazim masha'im binamim the excessively insulting one spreader of spite hamaz is someone who insults others a lot that's why he likes he likes to be mean he'll insult anyone he can find and masha'im binamim is a spreader of spite it's someone who wants, to, he, who wants to create arguments between each other and he wants to create fitna, he wants to cause corruption he, uh, what he does is he takes the secrets of one party and brings it to the uh, other and vice versa he just wants fights between people so uh, we should take a point over here is that even in our uh, Muslim community uh, there are some people that have this habit uh, they like to create fights between uh, each other. Uh, this is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned as, as defects and something that's really bad. 
So these are not things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wanted the Muslims upon. So we should stay away from, away, away from these things. And if someone does have a habit, uh, try to save yourself from it. One who excessively forbids the good, transgressor and sinner. Khairi is someone uh, that, you, that basically stops people from doing any type of good action. This, this was one of the habits of Walid ibn Mughira. He used to stop people from doing good, like giving charity, giving stuff to poor people, etc. Mu'atadin a theme, a transgressor and a sinner. Uh, both of them are basically in the same meaning. Mu'atad is someone who crosses the line. And a theme is, uh, it's also ism al it's someone that does a lot of sins. Over here in all of these verses, you will see there are ism al manna, hammaz, hallaf, all of these are ism al someone that does it a lot, That's a, that he has a habit of it. Utullim ba'da dhalika zaneem, foul-mouthed in addition to all of this of improper lineage. So Utullin is someone that does not care about anyone around them. He will just go on and insult whomever he can find. He tries to act mean and people don't like to be near him. Like someone has a mean boss, a very, very mean boss. Like people don't like when he is around them. And whenever he comes, they're just gonna uh, hate him all the time. That's something, that's someone Utull. And after Ba'da Dalika Zani, uh, Zanim is someone whose biological father is not the same one as his legal father and this does not include stepfathers meaning he was born because the mother did uh, zina so uh, Walid ibn Mughira didn't know uh, did know about the other points but this was one of the points that he did not know about so he went to his mother and he his mother actually confirmed this so this Walid ibn Mughira said bad for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is one of the punishments Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala basically mentioned his defects in the people that this person that thinks that he has a lot of power, a lot of wealth and he's mocking Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam what's his status? His status is nothing, he's a zaneem he has all these bad defects and after that he's a zanim, he has no status. And when our verses are recited to them or uh, recited to him, he says, these are stories of the earlier people. We will soon sign his snout. So, um, it's actually mentioned that when Walid ibn Mughira uh, died, uh, Khurtum is basically a nose like a pig. So uh, it's said that when he died, his nose was cut in half. So this is the punishment Allah Almighty gives to those that do blasphemy regarding the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that do ghustaqi. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from being amongst those people. Ya Allah, save us from any time saying anything wrong in your court or regarding your beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam even make our children the lovers of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Ameen The next verse so uh, these previous verses were about Walid ibn Mughira now coming on it's uh, when the Kuffar they were mocking Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam a lot Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala uh, gave them the punishment and they were lacking rain they had no more rain so uh, it was such a bad scene at that time that they were starting to eat animals such as dogs and whatever they can find because they had no rain, they had no vegetables, even their animals like their camels and horses had nothing to eat. So at that time, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is basically giving the punishment and he's giving the parable of the people of Bani Israel. Uh, the verse is, Inna balawnaum kama balawna ashab al jannah. إِذَا أَقْسَمُوا لَيَسْرِمُنَّهَا مُصْبِحِينَ وَلَا يَسْتَسْنُونَ Verily, we have tried them as we tried the people of the garden when they swore to pluck the fruits of the garden in the morning without saying, inshallah, if Allah wills. وَلَا يَسْتَسْنُونَ So, uh, يَسْتَسْنُونَ, it actually means uh, when 
without basically having the intention or without saying that if Allah wills. So the story over here is about the people of Bani Israel. There was a man that owned a garden and he was a very generous man. Uh, he used to give a lot of charity among the poor. Uh, whatever fruits fell from the tree onto the ground, he used to give it away in charity to the masakim. And when he died, he had three sons. And his sons, they basically uh, talked to each other and they said that uh, we are now three people. It was one father and he was just taking care of us. Now we're three people taking care of our family and we need to make profits now. So if we still give to the masakin like how our father used to give them, how would we make any profits? So uh, what we should do is, we cannot directly say that we're not giving anymore. What we will do is we'll come in the morning, way early in the morning. And we'll take all the fruits away so that when the masakin come, they would find no fruits. So deciding this, they went to sleep and the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala became angry upon uh, their action. So their garden caught a fire and the whole garden was finished. When they woke up in the morning, they said to each other that we could wake up, we should go so that we can collect the fruits. And they came towards the garden walking secretly so that no one can find out. When they came to the garden, they found out that their garden has been burned and the whole thing is ruined. Then they realized they did a bad thing. So Allah Almighty is mentioning this parable just as how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested these people. He has tested the people of Mecca. Uh, but the only difference between the two is that the people of Bani Israel, they realized that they made a mistake and after that they asked for forgiveness, but the kuffar of Quraysh stayed on the straight path. So about the story that uh, verily we have tried them as we tried the people of the garden when they swore to pluck the fruits of the garden in the morning without saying if Allah wills. فَطَافَ عَلَيْهَا طَائِفٌ مِّن رَبِّكَ وَهُمْ نَائِمُونَ Then there passed by the garden a fire from your Lord, a punishment. So فَطَافَ عَلَيْهَا طَائِفٌ The exact translation is So passed upon it, the passer, which was basically the punishment. مِّن رَبِّكَ فَمْ يُرْ لُورْ وَهُمْ نَائِمُونَ While they were sleeping. فَأَصْبَحَتْ كَسَّرِيمٌ So the garden became black by the morning. Like a pitch dark night. Fatanada musbihin. Then they called out one another. They were calling each out other as soon as the morning broke. Anigudu ala harfikum in kuntum sarimin. This was what they were calling, saying, Go to your uh, your garden in the morning if you would pluck the fruits. Fantalaku wahum yatahafatun. So they departed, conversing in secret low tones. They were talking to each other slowly. miskin. No miskin, a poor man should enter upon you into it today. So no man should, no poor man should see you today, and they should not take away any fruits from you. qadrin. And they went in the morning with strong intention, thinking that they have power, power to. Prevent the poor taking anything from the fruit. So they saw that the garden has, uh, has caught fire and it has been burnt. But when they saw the garden, they said, Verily, we have gone astray. Nay, indeed, we are deprived of the fruit. We wanted all the fruit, but this is our punishment that we got no fruits. The best among them said, Did I not tell you? Why say you not? Inshallah, if Allah wills. قَالُوا سُبْحَانَ رَبِّنَا إِنَّا كُنَّا ظَالِمِينَ They said, Glory to our Lord, Subhana Rabbina. Verily, we have been, إِنَّا كُنَّا ظَالِمِينَ We have been from the ظَالِمُونَ, from the wrongdoers. فَأَقْبَلَ بَعْدُهُمْ عَلَى بَعْدٍ يَتَلَاوَمُونَ then they turned one against another, blaming. They said, Woe to us! Really, we were 
Taghun, the transgressors and disobedient. Asa Rabbuna an yubdilana khayram minha. We hope that our Lord will give us in exchange a better garden than this. Inna ila Rabbina ragibun. Truly, we turn to our Lord. So at the end, they ask for forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if the, uh, one of the message over here is that if you have done something bad, do not lose hope from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive you and give you better than before. If you were thinking, a lot of people think that their prophet is running from something haram. And if they stop doing that haram thing, they will no longer have profit. If you come towards the right path, if you ask forgiveness from your Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you more. If you come upon the halal path, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you more profit than you were earning in your haram. Such is the punishment in this life. But the punishment, but truly the punishment of the hereafter, the akhirah, is akbar, is greater. If they but knew. So this was uh, for the kuffar that uh, even the Bani Israel, when they, they uh, did not thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they wanted more for themselves. They got the punishment, but they came back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this punishment that the garden became on fire, it got burnt. This was an adab in the, in the dunya. This was not an adab in the akhirah. The adab of akhirah is, is uh, tougher, is uh, extreme than the adab in this dunya. لَوْ كَانُوا يَعَلَمُونَ but They but knew. So I make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, may He keep us away from those uh, that are that do blasphemy in the, uh, for the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. May Allah subhanahu wa taala keep us away from being one of those uh, for, of the Ghustaq Rasul. May Allah subhanahu wa taala keep our children away. May Allah subhanahu wa taala keep us away from doing any haram actions, from having any haram income. May Allah subhanahu wa taala keep us on the path of halal. وصلى الله تعالى على خير خلق محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين برحمتك يا رحمة الرحيمين. I'll see you inshallah next week. جزاك الله خير. السلام عليكم.